Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, welcome to this special panel discussion presented by Exchange for Media in association with the Bula. The topic of discussion today is how the smartphone and telecom industry has adjusted its launch and performance strategy in the wake of COVID-19. I'll be joined uh, by speakers on the panel today are Ms. Ruchira Jaitley, CMO India, HMD Global, uh, Mr. Avnish Khosla, CMO Vodafone Idea, Mr. Damyant uh, Singh Khanoria, CMO Oppo India, Mr. Mr. Shivam Ranjan, Head of Marketing Motorola India, uh, Mr. Sandeep KS, Associate Director Marketing Redmi India, Mr. Hanan Fogel, VP APAC Tabula, and I, I want to welcome our session chair, Mr. <coughs> Nawal Ahuja, co founder, Exchange for Media. A quick announcement that towards the end of this discussion, uh, we will have a QA. And if you have any questions, please post and we'll make sure it gets answered. Thank you so much for taking time and joining us. Over to you, Mr. Ahuja. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rohil. Uh, thank you for introducing us. And uh, thank you to all the panelists for taking time out. Uh, uh, as you all know, we are. Uh, we are here to discuss uh, what's happening in the smartphone industry, what's happening uh, in the smartphone and telecom industry uh, as far as COVID is concerned, uh, the new launches, the performance, performance strategy. Uh, there are two, three areas around which we'll center our discussion today. Uh, first being, what's the learning that uh, companies in this domain have from the evolving consumer uh, preferences, consumer habits, especially in the post-COVID world, what's happened in the last 12 odd months. As we all know, smartphones, telecom is an extremely ultra competitive industry and uh, the churn rate of products in this industry is very high. So we'll talk to our panelists about what uh, they have picked up uh, over the last 12, 18 months that gives us insights about how marketing in this industry will shape up in the next uh, foreseeable future. Uh, the other part around which we'll, uh, the pillar around which we'll center our conversation is uh, content marketing. Uh, content marketing has been a domain uh, around which brands have built a lot of their uh, consumer reach out strategies over the last three, four years. And it's a domain that's really come off age. Uh, we will then discuss uh, the, the latter part of the conversation will take up uh, areas around how smartphone industry has uh, utilize content marketing and what are the evolving trends there. So thank you again for joining us. Let me start with the lady on the panel, Ruchira. Thank you for being on the panel. You belong to a brand that has a very rich legacy uh, and that's also been kind of challenged by uh, this inundation of you know new brands over the last few years. Nokia is back in the game. Uh, what's been your, uh, what's been your uh, take on how consumers have evolved in this entire journey that Nokia has had over the years. Naturally, uh, smartphones uh, have become ubiquitous. So uh, consumers have very deep, uh, already have very deep insights into what they require. So they, they don't require as much education. But what are the three, four things that you've seen uh, after having coming on board in Nokia that tells you uh, something about how uh, consumers base their purchase decision? Uh, thanks, Naval. And first of all, really happy to be on uh, this panel with a lot of my very illustrious contemporaries and peers. Uh, they certainly make my life very interesting. But uh, to your point, I think I'm sure we'll all agree that uh, there are a number of themes, and I think particularly over the last year, 11 months is uh, really the topic of this panel. The last 11 months, I think consumers have come back to really the core of what this category stands for and why it's become a hero category in the industry which is really on connectivity, on communication, on staying connected, really, uh, not to paraphrase an old Nokia line. Uh, so it's really clear that for us in this period, uh, the one thing that we could do was be there for consumers. And um, our entire premise has been that as Nokia, we, we believe technology is a force for good. And in being a force for good, you need to be there with consumers doing what is necessary to make their lives better whether it's with pure, secure, up-to-date, which is a promise that we maybe brought in for the first time three years ago. And at that point in time, so last year, at this time, we were rolling out Android 10 upgrades at a point when consumers were really looking for how to keep their devices fresh. We were rolling out security patches so you didn't have to worry about your online transactions. 
we rolled out an industry first with the replacement guarantee, you know, and that was at the lower end of devices, not just at the higher end. So, you know, if your if your device broke down, it was no questions asked replacement. We're still doing things like screen replacements. We even, by the way, did an online launch for a feature phone, which is 5310 because there was a period by about May to June where consumers were tired and there was a, store, there was a study put out, I think by Counterpoint, which mm -hmm. consumers were overloaded and wanted a digital detox, but needed to stay connected in this period. So we actually broke all records with sales of that device. Yeah. Counterintuitive in a time like COVID. The bottom line, and you spoke about content. I think content, and we'll come to that later, but the, the power of great content with a promise of what a device can do in this period has, I think, been a huge solace for consumers. And which is why we continue to see rankings of trust rankings of phones and devices. And you know, Nokia is there, of course, and as are a number of the devices here as well. While those, why those trust rankings are so important because consumers do trust their lives to their devices today. So um, I'm gonna hand back to you in the in the in the spirit of saying succinct, but I could talk a lot more about this topic. It's been a complete transformation though, I would say, in terms of consumer wants and needs. So consumers today are coming back and saying, that's the phone with the replacement guarantee. I want to know if you're going to give me an Android upgrade. I want to know as to what's the kind of bloatware that you know, you're putting on my device and will it slow down? Uh, because they also want to, by the way, hold on to their phones for longer, given the kind of economic downsides that we've seen in this period. So all in all, it's been a very, very interesting period of learning in this industry. And I'm sure my, my uh, co-panelists will agree to that. Thank you. Thank you. Sandeep, I'm going to jump to you. Uh, Redmi has been a success story uh, of the last few years. It's a brand that has done well and uh, uh, I presume there is some very deep consumer connect the brand has managed to find <coughs> you know, insightful conversations you had. I don't want you to divulge trade secrets, but tell us what's the three, four things last 12 months that uh, you know Redmi has done or picked up uh, when it comes to, you know, increasing your value, volume, share? Hi, Naval. Thank you. For, it's, it's a good question and hi to everybody. Uh, like Ruchira mentioned, I think it's, we make our lives interesting every day. I know we follow each other's work and, and uh, yep. Uh, two, three things. Um, obviously, being the market leader comes with this uh, a huge advantage, right? We are a six-year-old brand in India. A little more than 10, 10 years old globally. And from a Redmi perspective, we have always delivered three things to our me fan, as we like to call them. Uh, one is best specs, right? So we are known for providing great hardware. Could you, could you talk a little louder? It'll be better audible, I think. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Yep. So the three things that we at Redmi always usually deliver is one, uh, like I mentioned, best specs. We've always known to give great hardware and uh, being an internet company and at the heart of being innovation for everybody, uh, hardware is something that we really, you know, well on, obsess on. The next point that we always have been delivering is, is highest quality. Um, it's great that people buy our products, right? Um, I'm sure all of you are aware we are usually sold out in seconds, uh, yeah. but they do come back to us simply because the quality is great. And last but not the least, on pricing. I mean, uh, our uh, chairman and founder, Bijun, has openly admitted saying that we will not make more than 5% in terms of profit. So that being said, we have absolutely seen a, a fantastic year, 2020. Uh, smartphone became an essential commodity. It was almost like a uh, roti kapra or smartphone, right? You had to, had to communicate to the world, stay connected, it was a very, very challenging year. Um, so smartphone became essential and uh, we realized that delivering on these three pillars, um, the best specs, highest quality and honest pricing will enable us to grow from strength to strength. And when it comes to marketing, I think um, we've been a very social and a digital first brand, right? Um, I'm sure all of, all of you must be following our uh, India head, Manukumar Jain. Uh, we are all over, we are all over social media. We're all over the digital ecosystem. Um, content marketing is something that uh, we absolutely thrive. Uh, to give an example, the single biggest quality about our content marketing would be agility. 
um, as an internet brand, right? We don't take ourselves so seriously where we obsess on content which might take months to probably get executed. Uh, there are times when we execute content absolutely over the fly. Sometimes it's as good as a tweet, which probably takes minutes. Fantastic. I think uh, the uh, areas that every smartphone manufacturer today wants to focus on. Mm -hmm. Amish, let me come to you. Uh, you guys work with perhaps almost every uh, mobile manufacturer in this country. And uh, so Sandeep uh, very succinctly put down the three areas where Redmi really focuses on. Isn't that the focus area for every phone company? You know, if I were an ex phone company, I'd want to give my customers the best pricing uh, and the best hardware quality, as well as the best specs uh, available out there in the market. So what do you think is stopping, you know, X company from doing that versus say a Y company? I suspect, uh, well, I mean, each company has its priorities in terms of what kind of segment of the market or what end of the pyramid you want to focus on, fundamentally how you want to position yourself. So I, I'm not so sure I really want to comment on what the OEM manufacturers are doing. I think in terms of, if I was to just circle back to the question you raised in terms of what's really changed in the last uh, 12 months, I think let me, uh, in some perspective from a consumption standpoint, in terms of what really is happening from a consumer lens perspective, what are we seeing as far as consumption is concerned, what really is changing? So it's been a huge ro roller coaster from our perspective, right? Uh, <laughs> overnight, uh, we had a huge amount of consumption that broke through. We had to go out and capacitate our networks, right? So now more than ever, people in businesses have adopted digital. They're doing things that they never did before using both connectivity and mobile devices. And I think um, when we fundamentally talk about really this whole uptake as far as quality is concerned, yeah. what we're essentially seeing is time spent and therefore consumption has galloped, which means that consumers are obviously spending close to three and a half to four hours on their mobile devices, uh, which is good from our perspective, which of effectively means that consumers are starting to upgrade, which means a better yield from our perspective. Uh, the other thing that we're seeing, obviously, is that consumers have come online at an accelerated pace. So, I mean, we've obviously, we owned all our digital acceleration agendas by almost about two, three years. And what this therefore means is that we're able to sell as well as serve our customers far more effectively, and obviously at a, at a far lower cost. So really, uh, I mean, from an economics perspective, it's really, really benefited if I were to look at what are the positives that we've seen. The other fundamental shift we are seeing is in terms of consumption patterns, right? So it's no longer entertainment or it's no longer, I mean, at a particular point of time, almost about 70% of the video consumption was entertainment. It still is, but there is a discernible shift that we are starting to see where essentially entertainment is moving to more enrichment. So from mass to curated experiences, this therefore means we are starting also to curate uh, experiences extremely differentially. We just recently launched uh, premier, uh, a prime VOD, which is, you know, you can buy a VOD uh, at a transaction level. So that's something that we've just done. Uh, the other thing that we've done is obviously consumers are starting to drive this whole philosophy of Thrive, which yeah. is really about how we go out and enrich ourselves. Uh, so it's all about education. It's all about upskilling. It's about fitness. So there's a lot of work that we are starting to do to be able to see how we can be more relevant. Uh, and meaningful at this point of time in terms of the propositions that we are attempting to create uh, digitally to be able to target these customers. And therefore, in the process, we're starting to open up a world of endless possibilities as far as consumers are concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Abhish. Shannon, let me just come to you now. Uh, since you uh, guys work with uh, uh, you know, the entire spectrum of mobile manufacturers across the board, what's your sense of you know, what's happened during the last 12 months during COVID? Uh, since you work with all of these manufacturers, they have uh, their own areas of focus in terms of their consumer reach out strategies. I'll come to the content part later, but give us an overview of how how you think, you know, consumer uh, preferences, consumer uh, reach out strategies have changed for uh, these mobile brands. Sure. I mean, first of all, thanks for the question. And I think that when we look at all of these manufacturers, uh, as advertisers on the Tabola network, we see certainly how many of them have had to shift, change, and pivot the way that they're going to try and con connect with their potential consumers. So certainly there's been a great shift in the types of content that have been uh, that have been running on the network. How those stories are told and how do I really get uh, consumers to connect and convert uh, one type of device to another in a day and age where when we look back into the lockdown months, certainly people couldn't even... Walk, walk across the street to a shop, see something that caught their eye and, 
and really change over. So I think that we've seen a lot of great innovation out of all of uh, the partners that we've been looking uh, and seeing on our network uh, from an advertiser standpoint. But there's another uh, area in which Tabula works with, um, with all of these OEMs globally. And this is uh, through our Tabula news product. Uh, I think, you know, when, when we look at or listen to what some of the panelists have mentioned, Avnish spoke about time on device and consumption of content, and the Ruchero spoke about content and trust. Um, I think that these are very, very, very important uh, topics. But the one thing also that I think is really important is experience and the value in the services. And that's where I think that Tabula comes in to, to connect uh, the consumers, the consumers of now, right? So who is, who is my target audience that I'm trying to convert and get them to purchase my product? How do I continue to drive connections with these, con with these uh, consumers after they have bought the product? And this is really where Tabula comes in and, and we can drive good post-purchase and post-conversion relationships between the users now and the manufacturers. Yes. Damiant, uh, let me quickly come to you now. Uh, Oppo has again been a you know, success story in India in the last two years. COVID has really uh, one change consumer preferences and you all, also had to lie low because of what was going on in the larger environment. What are the things that Oppo has done? Uh, tell us new interesting things that Oppo has done as far as uh, you know, your covering approach towards uh, uh, consumers or any insights you picked up habits that you think are a result of COVID and that are likely to stay here? Sure, sure, Namal. So I, th I think one of, the, one of the big things for us really is if you look at the last 11, 12 months, you know, there was the, the industry kind of shrunk for a large period of time and our business is specifically because we're such an offline dominant brand. <clears throat> for us, it was, it was a massive challenge, right? Uh, and it was almost like the innovation of having to go online and change the way our, our go-to-market strategy worked was almost forced on us. And it was great because it had to kind of happen overnight, right? So, so we, I think in the middle of the year, had, uh, had a massive challenge on our hands. And I think we had innovation in the company that was working at warp speed because we literally had to kind of change the way we were selling our devices uh, to going online. Uh, and there was really an outpouring of ingenuity in the company in, in how we dealt with our partners in the way we were kind of selling to our consumers. Um, and I think over a period of time in the last seven, eight months specifically, I think what we've seen is a, from a, just from a pure industry perspective, the, the pace at which consumers are upgrading their devices and wanting to buy devices that are significantly more capable than what they had uh, has moved significantly. Right. So, and I think, and I think over a period of time, you'll start seeing the average selling price of devices, uh, really move up. So I think I think one of the big upsides for us uh, during the COVID period has been people have been buying or have started buying significantly more capable smartphones, right? Uh, and like Avni said, there is a lot more dwell time on, on smartphones. And so some of the features like fast charging, we, I mean, one of the key benefits that we have is, is for example, the Whoop fast charging, like aspects of the product that made it more capable came to the forefront and, and consumers went from kind of really buying entry price point segment phones to significantly more capable devices. And so for us, uh, from that perspective, uh, it was it was really, really positive. Uh, and I think if we look at uh, 2020 overall, I think Oppo grew in a declining market, which is which is amazing. Uh, given the fact that, you know, our offline dominant uh, go to market strategy was was really challenged. I think if I think of consumers and, and how they're kind of changing, um, I believe one of the key differences that uh, that we're going to start seeing in the way consumers behave is I, I think there's going to be a very strong shift in the narrative that consumers buy into from from really looking at only the speeds and feeds narrative of uh, of just the hardware to really looking for meaningful innovation, right? Uh, and then saying, okay, fine, it might be 120 FPS screen or whatever it might be, but I don't, I'm not just interested in that story. I want you to kind of tell me about how this device genuinely empowers and enriches my life, right? And I think that's a storyline that consumers increasingly are kind of going to look at from, from smartphone brands. Uh, and as they upgrade to more capable smartphones, uh, I guess our ability to also kind of tell stories uh, is going to be increasingly challenging because it's going to be less about hardware and it's going to be more about software features and, and what really the phone kind of allows you to do differently. So to put it succinctly, I think 
meaningful innovation is going to be what consumers look for in the future. And that's really the, the big change we need to kind of bring about in the marketing that we do. I think, thank you, Damian, very well put. I think uh, as consumers, we want to move away from just, you know, of course, everybody wants the best camera. There's no denying. Oh, I think yeah. that's become a hygiene, you know, and it's also yeah. not a differentiator anymore, so to say, because hardware quality at some level has peaked across the phones, right? So it's oh, now about the qualitative aspects about, you know, uh, like Avnish mentioned, entertainment being consumed and that entertainment also going beyond mass entertainment to curated <coughs> entertainment. So what is yeah. the experience that your phone is giving you, which is enriching your life, not just from an entertainment point of view, but for example, education, one of the things he said, and so many other aspects. Shivam, let me uh, come to you now. Avnish, uh, uh, Damian rather mentioned a very important point uh, as far as uh, you know, innovation is concerned. Uh, as uh, Ruchira started the session by saying, you know, there are three key aspects that Nokia focuses on and one presumes that every smartphone manufacturer, you know, wants to fo focus on that aspect. How do you make sure that you may, uh, you, you get your uh, brand stand out as compared to the others? The competitive market, multiple brands, each brand has, you know, various products. What do you do as a marketer? It's a nightmare. Absolutely. I think <clears throat> the point is bang on. The industry is absolutely crowded. We've got uh, uh, we've got multiple brands competing for the same space, and I think um, from our perspective, I I completely agree with Damiant. I think uh, uh, we have to move away from uh, sticking to a hardware story only, <clears throat> because the more we stick to a hardware story, uh, the more challenging it's going to get for brands to differentiate, and that's what I think we also believe in. So uh, one of the things that uh, we have stood by and we've delivered to our consumers is a clean and pure Android experience. I think that's what uh, consumers see with Motorola uh, to 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 ensure that there's no adware, there's no bloatware for their uh, 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 with the experience that they have with the devices. That's that's clearly a differentiator which we have created, which is coming from the consumer experience on the device and not just specifically from a hardware perspective. However, I don't think that hardware can be completely eliminated, and I think <clears throat> I think it's important for hardware to evolve basis uh, the consumer needs and changing consumption patterns. So, for example. If you see uh, with the impact of the pandemic, we've seen uh, shifts in, uh, uh, in consumer behavior in terms of doing a lot of uh, personal as well as professional uh, tasks on their devices simultaneously, a lot of multitasking aspects. What is evolving <clears throat> is possibly a requirement for better performance uh, for them to be able to handle so many things simultaneously on their devices. Uh, what is evolving <clears throat> with say upcoming technologies like 5G? What are the use cases that consumers are going to take up uh, say with 5G, a lot of content viewing, uh, which ensures that we're looking at a better display uh, experience in the future. So I think it's important uh, to have the services and software differentiation. But along with that, I think the hardware uh, differentiation has to be uh, played uh, with respect to the future consumer trends and consumption patterns. So I think uh, while uh, uh, I, I clearly believe that just doing hardware upgrades and playing the megapixel and megabyte story is not enough. Uh, and, and doing, uh, you know, playing a certain price point is not enough. But I think a combination of uh, providing service-based differentiation or a software-based differentiation along with uh, capitalizing or predicting the right, uh, uh, right consumer trends and then, uh, you know, preempting, uh, preempting those trends and then developing hardware solutions that actually cater to those consumer use cases like Damiant uh, also mentioned, right? <clears throat> we have to ensure that we build uh, consumer use cases and build uh, devices that deliver what matters to the consumers instead of uh, just providing them a package which looks uh, good on paper. So that's that's that being said, I think at Motorola we've we've tried to do that consistently. Uh, we uh, we've uh, not just delivered uh, software uh, and OS level experiences that are differentiated, which provide uh, consumers a clean uh, OS experience, uh, but we've also delivered innovation. So for example, we've been first this year. Uh, in multiple segments. So we've, we've been the first to launch Snapdragon 662, 750G, a lot of these performance-led, uh, you know, chipsets. We've been first to market in India uh, with respect to the entire uh, uh, market portfolio that exists in the, in the country. And I think that came from the fact that, like I mentioned, the consumer use cases demanded better performance, et cetera. So we've done that. So uh, consumer use case-led hardware innovation is also along with software innovation. And uh, we, are, we, are, we are happy that uh, we've actually grown uh, with a significant premium to market this year. We've grown in double digit numbers across the year, uh, while obviously the first half of the year was, uh, was seeing a decline clearly. 
uh, we've we've actually uh, had a had a double digit premium to market growth throughout the year. So I think uh, that's what is important from a uh, from from my perspective. And I think a consumer in approach is always yeah. always going to be critical in the market. Yes, I think good points, uh, Dinesh. Let me come to you. What I've gathered, and uh, there are very good insights from you know each of the brands that we've got so far. Because of the nature of the industry and the you know association a consumer has with his with his smartphone, which is a personal device, the uh, the decision making is very kind of complex. It is multi layered when you're looking at you know the features, the quality of hardware, the price, the you know other uh, areas, you know the apps and integration. Charging is one interesting point Amyan's made. Whereas as a consumer, when I see smartphone advertising. Largely focused on camera or pricing, right? These two pillars, roughly. Do you think there are other areas of focus when it comes to advertising that the smartphone industry needs to bring into play, or the other areas are still kind of very nascent in terms of consumers, uh, you know, focusing on them and you know, pricing and you know, phone camera quality is what eventually sells in this country. So thanks, Noval, for bringing up this point. Uh, in fact. Uh, at ASUS, we are, you know, like uh, starting actually with the consumer needs in mind. And uh, we really deep dive into looking at what are the areas which are here to not serve by the rest of our esteemed competitors out here. So one of the key areas that we've been working on, which has been very, very relevant, uh, you know, to the market is essentially smartphone gaming. And uh, we've got this uh, brand called ROG, which is Republic of Gamers. And uh, we have a flagship uh, gaming smartphone focus in the market. And what has actually happened is that when pandemic actually struck, a lot of consumers uh, were confined to their homes and uh, you know they could not indulge in outdoor sports, outdoor social activities, and therefore gaming really, really grew in India. In fact, if you look at some of the numbers uh, which have been stated by many analysts, uh, the growth rate has been in excess of 50%. Uh, in this particular scenario, what we've done is that we bought in very, very strong capabilities which are differentiated from the rest of the smartphones, uh, which actually enable console-like gaming experience on the smartphone. Of course, uh, when it comes to performance or sustained peak performance, it's the best product in the world, uh, beating every other uh, smartphone in those aspects, uh, not focused on the camera story. Uh, but very, very strongly focused on bringing differentiators, like very, very high touch response rate, a 6,000 image battery, which can give you endless content consumption, excellent audio. In fact, uh, getting the best DxO mark on audio, uh, you know, for this uh, smartphone range. And uh, we've actually been a brand which has been able to break uh, the 40,000, 50,000 rupee price point barrier in India, which very, very few uh, brands, uh, despite making massive investments, have been able to break through. And this is coming because of our, uh, you know, consumer centricity, because of creating products, solutions, community engagements, which are very, very consumer centric. And then, you know, like communicating to them effectively, either through content marketing, through digital first, connecting directly with our consumers, giving them excellent experience, uh, both virtually as well as offline. Uh, to ensure that they really, really, you know, get the essence of what we are marketing to them. And because we are differentiated, we are consumer centric and we deliver what our target uh, consumer really requires. It's got amazing traction uh, and amazing recommendation. In fact, uh, the ROG phone is one of the most awarded smartphones in India. Uh, in 2019, we won more than 25 awards and now the 22 uh, 2020 award season is on and we won more than 17 awards uh, for the ROG phone. So it's been also one of the most awarded smartphones in India, you know, from that perspective. So realistically, apart from camera, there's a lot more that the smartphone can bring, uh, you know, to the consumer. Uh, and I'm sure, uh, you know, brands are looking at multiple other aspects, you know, from uh, positioning and marketing and also proposition perspective to the end customer. And uh, if you are uh, you know, kind of delivering something which is differentiated, very sharply defined for a certain target consumer, you would certainly have success in that area. I think very important, and that's fundamental to marketing, uh, be very sharp in your targeting and also have your premise very well defined. Uh, Avnish, uh, let me come to the content marketing part now. I know you have to leave at four, so we'll free you up by then. Content marketing as a domain has evolved significantly in the last few years. But in an industry where there is so much uh, going on, 
every uh, telco every uh, smartphone manufacturer is trying to sell you the same thing fundamentally what a telco is giving me is talk time and surf time right uh, so content marketing also beyond a point starts to look alike x versus y y versus z how do you differentiate when you go out to the market especially content marketing being a domain which unlike legacy media where if you had to do a tv campaign you would have to spend months uh, you know planning uh, your campaign then investing significant amounts of money content marketing has lowered the barrier significantly right you can create a plan and like sandeep said you know you can you can have it on the fly sometimes so it's lowered the barrier of entry for you know everybody to do it two uh, ideas can be copied very easily so if you know x is talking about a new price package the y you know y and z can launch a similar looking price package within a very short period of time so how do you as a marketer really utilize content marketing well at the peril of you know at the risk of also you know not being copied so quickly uh now let me just rewind and basically say that uh, from our perspective content marketing has been a forte much before we became vodafone idea or much before we became we i mean to that extent there is a fair amount of work uh, we have done as far as this space is concerned in terms of building capabilities as well as building this to a science so fundamentally at at we we believe that more is definitely uh, does not necessarily translate into what we call a positive uh, npi or what we would call essentially a, a a positive social sentiment so from our perspective it's extremely important in terms of the kind of content that we are putting out like i said because we've been working over this for the last so many years we have some fairly sophisticated listening tools we, we look at sentiment analytics etc we are very very clear in terms of what kind of content works for what segment of consumers and therefore to that extent you as a brand you will probably notice eventually at the end of the day the kind of content that we put out or the kind of content that we're curating is probably very very different from the kind of content that maybe others are doing so i think to that extent we understand the space extremely well uh, we therefore have a fair amount of sophistication in terms of uh, instant control which therefore tells us what's really working from our perspective with what kind of consumers it is working and uh, i mean we keep fine tuning this to an art right in terms of whether it's the creative rendition whether it is in terms of statics whether it's in terms of the videos uh, that we create whether it's the kind of content that we're infusing uh, what's really topical what's really uh, what are the kind of social associations that we want to drive and i think over a period of time we've done some very very endearing work in this space right so i'm i, I won't get into further depth in the interest of time uh, and also I don't want to reveal too much but all i can tell you is that um, as as a space uh, in terms of what we are able to drive so you may not necessarily see too much from our standpoint we fundamentally believe the kind of work that we do helps us deliver um, the kind of promoter scores that we need on social help us bring in a lot of passes into promoters or help convert a lot of detractors into uh, passive and then promoters and therefore that's something that we are mining continuously uh, as a science and as an art fair enough uh, ruchira you've been part of pepsi for many years and pepsi is a large advertiser on you know television Nokia has also done that. Uh, content marketing is new space, and uh, every phone company is invested significantly. And I don't mean to say that in money terms alone, but in terms of the you know attention, uh, effort, and time spent of the brand marketing team. Uh, what are your key deliverables from content marketing? How do you ensure that you know when it comes to usage, like usage of legacy media, for example, versus content marketing? What are the key ROI metrics you would look at? great question naval i think uh, today for everyone content marketing is um, it's a brave new arena like you said raises the bar at the same time drops entry barriers so that that brings an interesting contradiction in terms right um our approach actually and you know it's uh, it's interesting that you asked me that question because of the last 4 months uh, if you look at what we've done and when i put that in conjunction with the last 11 months of what the consumer is at right our content marketing has moved dramatically so i think there was a lot of content marketing which was about the next buzzy influencer who by the way probably uh, spoke about all of the devices uh, for all of us on this call it's moved from there to what's really more meaningful to the consumer in this moment i give you some examples uh, in india we worked with helpage over the christmas and new year period uh, because we found the older population in india was very isolated with covid 
because of the kind of risk that they had, you know, from infection and, you know, possible comorbidities. So we actually had a live concert with Alka Yagnik, streamed across the country with HelpAge, right? Now, theoretically, that's not content that a millennial or a Gen Z consumer wants to know about, but we saw tremendous, I mean, Avneesh spoke about net positive social sentiment. I mean, the kind of social sentiment you saw was just incredible. Equally, uh, just recently, globally, and I mean, a lot of our work, by the way, happens globally, because we believe that content by its very nature is not hyper-local necessarily. It's really the story that you're telling, right? So we did something called 48 Hours of Change, handed devices to people across the world and said, tell us about how technology can be a force for good and can introduce positive you know, impact in 48 hours. Those stories were not promoted. They were literally put up as just stories on Nokia's, you know, landing page, et cetera, went viral many times over across countries, regardless of language and the context. We also did something with Ruskin Bond, who's one of my favorite authors growing up, and someone called George the Poet in the UK, where they wrote short moving stories, one page, really, and four lines about stories about how people are feeling today, right? Now look at three different pieces of content from music, which we've all kind of seen before, concerts, streaming live, to a film, to stories on a page, but all of them centered around where consumers were at and what they wanted to know about, which is, can we connect people and can we do it in a way that's meaningful and that makes a positive impact, which I think this industry, and I'm sure all of my peers, we, we can disagree on a lot of stuff, but we'll agree that this industry can be a real force for positive impact and change. So I think that has been a very rich, and that's just the last four, three months actually, not even four months, we're not even into the fourth month yet. Uh, if I look back over the year, yes, sure, there've been all the interesting buzzy things to do. But for me, this has been, and this has been a thread that impactful brands over the world are seeing huge, huge impetus behind. And as a marketer, I think this is one of those times when you can actually put a, a line in the sand and say, you know what, if that's what my brand can stand for and that's what we can deliver for consumers, this is the moment to do it, right? Uh, so it's been a terrific learning experience, but more importantly, uh, we've got what we call the Nokia tribes globally. Those tribes are humming today, you know, with the kind of content that we're putting out because they're saying, this is the brand that I've loved. Really great learning experiences. Sandeep, uh, let me jump to you because, you know, Redmi has been a brand that's been in the space, uh, has done significant work in the space, and Ruchira has made some interesting points. Uh, tell me, as a brand marketer, where do you draw the line between uh, content marketing become a becoming a vanity project versus, you know, really driving ROI? Because at the end of the day, what you want is uh, move the needle on, you know, how your share in the market is moving, right? Of course, you want... Uh, uh, projects that go beyond just, you know, Tom Tomming your pricing and quality of handset and the best camera to, you know, what Ruchira has just mentioned. But there's also a risk somewhere that, you know, you get so deeply involved in that. All of us as, you know, brand marketers have used mm -hmm. media. And when you use television, you have a very, very, very well uh, defined set of, uh, you know, quantitative rules in terms of how you are justifying your spend. Content marketing has a lot of gray areas, right? So how do you kind of sit down and say, yes, this worked. No, this was not good enough. So Naval, before uh, it moves to Sandeep, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to interject. All of these drove traffic, engagement, mm -hmm. and by the way, transactions. Perfect. So uh, I don't think there's a contradiction, but that's my point of view. Love to hear from Sandeep, yeah. Uh, back in Xiaomi, uh, Redmi, right? Our single metric for ROI is sales walking. That's right, yeah. Right. How so, do you create content marketing to that? That's my question. So how do we create, see, we are a far, far younger brand to start with, yeah. right? So we have this advantage of automatically behaving young, right? And then we have a, a large fan base, which, which is millions in number, and whom we have regular interactions with. Where we do conduct regular uh, meetups with the me fans, as we call them, right? And... Uh, and therein get the absolute feedback of what do you guys want? What do you want in terms of spec, in terms of marketing, in terms of product innovation, in terms of what's happening in the company? We're very open and it's, it's a two-way channel. And we actually understand the vibe of, hey, look, I mean, this is what the world is actually doing. So to give an example, 
if you go to our instagram um, handle right we have multiple um, if you go to redmi's instagram handle the content there is absolutely true to probably what a me fan does beautiful images shot on the phone thankfully it's a great product fit for us right we make phones with wonderful cameras um, there is absolutely no text some basic fundamentals common sense is something that we absolutely apply and in that way once you start getting into a groove of being true to the platform or to the medium right uh, it's 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 far easier and needless to say like i mentioned uh, keep our ears open with respect to our fans because uh, out there being an internet company right your validation actually happens in minutes yeah. it's not we yeah. don't have to wait too long that's right interesting that you call your consumer fans i think that that's the starting point of you know the journey of connect channel let me come to you as i mentioned you work with a whole host of uh, smartphone brands across uh, the entire domain what are the what are the content marketing trends you've seen for this industry specifically that you think have worked better than others well i think that that is a it's a very uh, personalized uh, approach to every single uh, type of uh, of manufacturer and kind of the brand image and the brand story that uh, that they are trying to uh, to portray but actually i think that you know when i think about tabula in the space uh, and and thinking about what we can drive for all of these magnificent brands so all of my esteemed colleagues here uh, represent uh, great brands and of course tabula is very excited to see if we can explore how we can help drive all of your brand stories based on your very individualized message um but when i look around the table i don't see potential advertisers really on the on the network in fact i see up and coming publishers as well and how we create relationships with your potential buyers who then become users as i mentioned earlier using tabula's vast technology so i would say that while tabula is a great platform to amplify content and advertise that very specific brand message that uh, uh, you would try and drive uh the biggest opportunity of OEMs and telcos have with tabula is actually elsewhere so damian spoke about enriching consumers life we see a huge shift towards credible sources of information all of which are delivered through the tabula network across devices and languages especially in india where we have so many um shivam spoke about the evolution and the gravitation towards consumer needs avnish mentioned delivering the right piece of content to the right consumer at the right moment. Uh Ruchira spoke about delivering meaningful value to consumers. Uh, so all of these things are precisely what Tabula has set out to achieve on the open web, uh, a space which all of my fellow fellow, fellow panelists uh, belong to. So I think that the opportunity for OEMs and telcos actually is twofold. One is to become a meaningful almost huge source of traffic towards the open uh, open web think about seo 2.0 and what that means for for rankings uh, to matter to jur- to journalism uh, to matter uh, and look at what just happened uh, in australia over the past couple of weeks with uh, uh, the decision to cut off facebook traffic so being uh, another source of traffic for the open web is something that is a huge opportunity for oems and telcos and lastly build your own crm type relationship with users before apple and google does it for you and interact with your users directly around the news and services on the devices so i guess a sort of a apple news experience powered by the carrier so back to your original question about the trends in the types of uh, content marketing i think we see you know very individualized stories but when we think about what the uh, tabula can do as a platform to help all of these brands power their messages and then their relationships that's where i think the answer lies i think very important point especially with regards to uh, handset smartphone companies also having a leg in the content piece and as we've seen with what apple has done i think the world is moving in that direction you also have other companies you know whether it is entertainment content or any other type of content unless you want to hand over your entire piece to google as chanan said Damian, let me ask you uh, to stay on this question of uh, this topic of content marketing. How yeah. do you differentiate yourself in in this wide open space where everybody is kind of trying to do the same thing? 
Yeah. Well, look, I think I think there are two parts to this to this uh, to this question, right? Uh, so the first one is, I, I guess, content creation is is become pretty mainstream, right? So so when I talk when I look at the last twelve months, we had close to about thirty odd product launches at Oppo, right? Uh, and and these were across smartphones, IoT devices, you name it. We actually launched the F17 Pro last year. Uh, with with an online music event, right? Uh, we used Raftar and Hardy Sandhu, and it was essentially 45 minutes of music played live on YouTube uh, and interspersed with a bit of the product launch, right? So that was <clears throat> that I would call a fairly traditional use of of content to launch a product, right? Uh, and when I say there are two parts to what what what's being discussed, I think the future really is going to be different in that when as many brands as are uh, there on the panel are into content marketing, I guess what differentiates you is what's going to be successful, right? Uh, and I think <clears throat> increasingly as we look to the future, at least the role of, of, of a brand like Oppo, I think is going to be less about getting consumers to watch as it's about going to be getting them to create. So I think, I think the way we at Oppo think about what we want to empower our consumers with is really giving them very capable devices that allow them to do great things, right? And I think our simple philosophy at Oppo is we create or we democratize industry leading product. We bring path breaking innovation in the hand of the consumers and we then trust them to do great things with those products, right? Uh, and it's less about what we as a brand want to kind of get them to hear and see. It's more about how do they use our products in creating great things. So I guess uh, from an OPPO perspective, our belief in, in really kind of creating change for mankind at large rests around creating great innovation, putting them in the hands of the consumers, and then partnering with them and helping them create. So for me, I think uh, really content marketing is, is going to be passe. I think it's going to be more around uh, empowering consumers and allowing them to become, con I mean, they need to become brands, right? Uh, OPPO needs to be the catalyst of enabling them becoming great instead of kind of becoming a part of this mass that's kind of looking for attention from, from consumers. So I think in my books or in, in the books of, of, of our company, the way we look at uh, content creation is really, can we empower our consumers in going from these couch potatoes stuck on the screen to actually leveraging the great capabilities of our camera, to leveraging the great capabilities of, uh, of our products in creating and, and really kind of moving the next generation forward from a generation of content consumers to becoming a generation of creators. I guess that's, that's kind of moving humanity forward. Uh, and that's what I think as a company, we want to kind of really invest behind. Yeah, I think that's a very good differentiator for a product to have. Dinesh, let me ask you as a marketer, uh, you know, when you look at a domain like content marketing, there's so much out there on the web. Uh, and uh, today the world is grappling with, you know, multiple issues at the same time, fake information, irresponsible information, uh, polarization. Uh, it's become a very difficult world to navigate when it, when it comes to the, you know, the, the online world. How does a, how does a brand as a marketer, how do you, how do you deal with uh, uh, something like that? Uh, Raman, it's a good point uh, that you've raised, uh, but you know, ultimately it comes down uh, to the ethics of the brand and uh, I would also say that, you know, as a company, we too are uh, very, very focused on our consumers and we definitely look at what we call as the ROG phones. In fact, the full form of ROG as a brand is Republic of Gamers. Uh, yeah. So when we talk about Republic, for example, it's like our whole uh, consumer community is part of uh, this whole Republic. It's a, it's a community that we work with. Now, what we do is that we don't leave the community to itself. We actually do meaningful activities uh, which actually create a lot of content within the community. For example, every weekend uh, we uh, organize this uh, gaming tournament, which is called Battle of Gods, which is exclusively for consumers who own the ROG phone. Yeah. And uh, this tournament is live cast, uh, okay, on our YouTube channel. Uh, there are casters who give commentary on this and there is actual live gameplay, which happens and our consumers get awarded uh, every weekend uh, uh, from a certain price pool that they actually win. Uh, so this creates very meaningful content for them. The other important thing is like, uh, I would say while, uh, well, it's fine. I mean, like uh, definitely a smartphone is a creation device and all consumers who use, uh, especially flagship uh, smartphones, creation is a given that they can do a lot more and better creation as compared to even other massy smartphones in the market. 
However, uh, you know, when you actually uh, talk about uh, uh, being consumer centric, uh, we are also very, very much, uh, you know, looking forward to what are the pieces of information or insights uh, that consumers look out for in their smartphone? Because, you know, smartphone offers so much. I'm sure that you're not using more than 30, 40 percent of the capabilities of your own smartphone. So when it comes to, uh, you know, like uh, giving those insights uh, to our consumers uh, also about what they can actually push uh, the limits of the product that they're buying, because the kind of product that we sell, uh, if I have to give an analogy with, uh, let's say automobile as a category, uh, would be like we are selling a sports car, okay, which is very high end with multiple extra capabilities as compared to a standard car. So, so how do you push this uh, sports car to its best limits uh, so we, we definitely create meaningful content, uh, which uh, then engages the consumer and also informs him, uh, enhances uh, his own experience with the product and the kind of capabilities that he can put used to. So we, we really focus, uh, again, you know, as far as content is concerned from more consumer centricity perspective and see what are the multiple areas of content that we can actually create or co-create, whether it be with our consumers or whether it be experts in the market or media, which can actually, you know, like really help our consumers to understand us better, connect with us better, and also, you know, utilize the products and get better value out of them uh, while they actually use them. Shivam, let me ask you, when you sit down with your agency, how do you deal with these areas, which is very contentious, you know, uh, open web is a wide space where all sorts of, sorts of content is uh, floating around and a lot of that content is misinformation. How do you ensure that your communication is targeted? How do you ensure that your communication doesn't get jumbled up with, you know, information pieces on the web, which are not really accurate, which are not true, which are not credible. How do you navigate that space? No, I think uh, that's a... Sorry, was a question to me, uh, Nawal or somebody else? Shivam, sure, Shivam. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So Nawal, uh, basically it's a very, very good question. Uh, so from our perspective, uh, you know, you have to look at uh, media, also from a relevance perspective. So uh, let's say if we are actually talking to youth and we are talking to gamers, uh, what we actually look at is what are their uh, media consumption patterns or habits that they actually have. And then we talk to the relevant, uh, you know, uh, media channels and, you know, educate them more about uh, our product, our philosophy, our uh, entire, uh, you know, capability set that we bring overall as a company to serve the needs of the consumer much better and engage with them very, very deeply, meaningfully, and uh, you know, with very high integrity. And uh, we ensure that they are informed by us uh, you know, about details in great depth. And uh, you know, the chances of confusion or chances of any misinformation uh, spreading to the consumers uh, through any kind of content which is published in media is therefore minimized. Uh, that is what we certainly focus upon. Shivam, you want sure. to take it up too? Yeah. Mm, no, absolutely. I think fantastic question. Uh, like you mentioned, I think the the space is cluttered. Uh, uh, you know, there is a lot of content being created, uh, different kinds of content being created. And I think it's important to differentiate to be able to stand out of the cl clutter. So, I mean, frankly, I think it's important to st uh, stick to the basics. You know, sometimes it's really important to stick to the basics and the power of storytelling is really going to be important. So I think uh, staying true to the visual identity, staying, to, uh, staying true to the brand's identity, staying true to the, to the brand's uh, yeah. core values and, uh, uh, and, and, and its tonality, and then creating content which is engaging, which is relevant, which is realistic, which is uh, appealing. I think that's, that's what you, 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 have to, you have to stick to. You know, uh, sometimes just uh, going uh, innovating beyond a point uh, may not work. But I think having said that, uh, what what as a lever we use, for example, for our, our content creation is engagement. I think engagement for us is the biggest lever when it comes to content creation. And uh, uh, for example, like you mentioned, I think in the beginning, uh, how, how does it stack up versus say an ATL on television versus, uh, you know, content on digital. I think, I think these are two very different things. Uh, for example, ATL or television advertising of content is uh, for me, uh, you know, enhancing the reach, uh, reach metrics and the impressions. So top funnel uh, metric completely. For, for With respect to content creation on digital, uh, I think it's not just about reach and impressions. I think for me, the most important metric there is engagement. And like uh, I think uh, Damien mentioned, I think one of the important things is uh, how to get 
consumers to create content which then also becomes a source of trust see a lot of brands are pushing out content right so i mean we are pushing out content to consumers and uh, you know we are also uh, getting some key influencers to push out content to consumers but uh, how does the consumer trust that because sometimes it becomes a blind spot completely right you you get that trust by getting your own uh, you know set of consumers who are creating content for the brand that is being placed in communities which are close to brand so there are there are hundreds of close communities which exists out there which are actually close to brand brands can't enter there but there is a high value of trust and uh, you know uh, that that is associated with the admins and the people within those communities so i think it's important to get consumers to create content that is then shared uh, within their respective circles that creates value for the brand over 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 uh, over a long time and uh, i don't think uh, you know for example if we uh look at uh, content marketing uh, specifically with respect to just sell out right i think uh, like you mentioned the roi metrics there will become a gray area right so uh, to uh, to to correlate sell out to content marketing uh, i think is definitely going to be a challenge i think what we have to look at is sustained engagement over a period of time that results in sustained conversations positive sentiment for the brand which will obviously have an impact uh, you know over a period of time fair enough we have 3 minutes left so let me do a quick round of question i'll start with agni avnish since he has to leave early avnish uh, covid has changed a lot in the consumer space a uh, couple of things that i have picked up is time spent on devices has gone up significantly like damian mentioned people are upgrading more hence better phones being sold at higher price points which is overall good for the industry but what that also does is that raises the bar for the entire industry it makes things uh, takes competition to a different level what are the two three things that you think covid will fundamentally change for consumers uh, beyond what we have already seen so uh, if you look at uh, what I, i think what's here to stay essentially is that uh, consumers are transitioning online at a fairly accelerated pace i don't see that changing which means that we will need to find you know ways to be able to serve them uh, both sell and serve and i when i say serve it's also about how we engage with them and how we essentially do the whole air framework which means in terms of what are the kind of tools and technologies that we are bringing in to be able to serve and create a, a high degree of engagement as far as consumers are concerned but i don't think that's going away i think uh, the second part really is in terms of discerning choices that consumers are making uh, in terms of the kind of content that they want to consume so there's a there's a material or a tectonic shift that that's happening there and i don't see that changing i think uh, there is this i mean consumers are basically discovering a whole new world in terms of uh, the kind of information that's available and uh, obviously marketers like us today are ensuring that there is meaningful content uh, that's available today for them to be able to consume i don't see that starting to change i see a lot of that only accelerate so i believe that the engagement with both telco and the device is going to increase exponentially i think a lot of the glue that we have been looking for um, i think we are finding new ways of being able to create that glue uh, given the fact that for the longest period of time this category has been about uh, uh, how do i we used to call it a washing machine in the earlier years right in terms of easy come easy go but fundamentally consumers are now uh, discovering uh, new ways to be able to engage with the telco and uh, reciprocally i mean i think consumers telcos are discovering in terms of what they can do to be able to serve their consumers better uh, they are becoming a gateway to the larger digital world and i i see a lot of that therefore getting only stronger i fundamentally believe the opportunities for partnerships in terms of how brands will collaborate collaborate to be able to serve consumers you know uh, and in more meaningful ways will only increase so i see a lot of that continue to stay and only uh, get stronger uh, i think the only thing that i would uh, probably want to look at at a far more accelerated pace would be in terms of we still have a large cross section of customers that are still not able to enjoy the power of the internet uh, devices continue to be a challenge in terms of affordability for a very large cross section of the population and i think some of those challenges will continue uh, and more so given the kind of economic pressures that uh, certain cross sections of the population find themselves in so i think to my mind that really is the challenge that all of us collectively will need to work on but having said that uh, in terms of some of the mainstays that we've seen some of the discernible shifts that we've seen as far as the category is concerned are here to stay and only will get stronger in time as we move forward sandeep what about you from a product perspective i think uh, things like a full hd screen right 
it makes your uh, content watching experience and the entire mobile experience so much more richer and uh, so much more immersive uh, things like uh, batteries but you know long lasting batteries it's going to stay uh, innovations like uh, the you know camera specs whether it is it is a 64 megapixel or a 108 megapixel so on so forth uh, these are i i know a whole lot of panelists will say these are all specs but out there a whole lot of fans expect that uh, i'm i'm personally a big fan of rug and uh, rug is something that uh, every geek out there will salivate saying this is what the spec should actually be right um that's something that that's going to stay um in terms of the way the phones look it's getting much much better uh, the designs are beautiful a whole lot of consumers are pushing towards better looking devices that's something that's going to stay in terms of content marketing right at least from a, a Xiaomi Redmi perspective uh, we are going to be really creative we are going to be really agile that's something that the entire fan base looks forward to i think that's that's also going to stay and one last thing i would want to mention is we actually use our employees as influencers uh, you would see a whole lot of marketing campaigns where we feature our employees um, and we take that forward and take it very seriously and uh, it it creates a nice fun environment because when you are involved in the project as well it much becomes... saved on hiring brand endorsers goes into that 5% fund see unlike unlike our competitors we don't have deep pockets in terms of marketing so sometimes you would have to innovate well i'm sorry i'm going to excuse myself uh, just like to thank all of you you know a fantastic panel we should have uh, spent a lot more time thank you so much thank you so much bye bye nice nice meeting you bye let me come to you chanan tell us uh, you know from a content marketing point of view what are the things that covid would leave behind uh, it would stay here well i think that uh, what we can certainly say is that what will remain is uh, the accelerated pace of innovation that we're seeing out of all of our mar marketers. I think that we've all learned to pivot much faster, to change, to adapt, to be more agile, to echo Sandeep's uh, message earlier. I think that that is certainly something that uh, that is going to stay. At the same time, you know, when we think about the innovation within the, within content creation, a lot of the things that were said, content adjacency, content safety, consumer trust, all these things and beyond. It's all very important considerations to marketers before COVID, during COVID, certainly after. And what we're trying to do is actually we're trying to remove all the question marks around the content. A lot of this is around creation and then distribution, A-B testing. A lot of guessing goes into this game as well. So we're trying to remove a lot of that guessing game. So we make our tabula trends uh, certainly on our India network, uh, data insights accessible to our advertisers and to our uh, brand partners. We build tools that help um, content creators and marketers drive real-time topical insights. What are the users doing in the moment and over time? And of course, we also provide with a creative shop service to help brands craft not the message, which is very unique to every brand, but the delivery of the said message. And it's all data-driven. So when I think about you know, closing off with what COVID has left behind is A, bang for buck, B, on point, and C, reach the right consumer with the right message in the right moment. Yes. Uh, Dinesh, you want to add to that? Yeah, thanks, Naval. Uh, so uh, if you've seen one of the biggest trends uh, that has been during COVID, and as the mint also said, you know, because Oppo is definitely extremely strong, for example, in the offline segment, is shift to online. And uh, when the consumer shifts to online, uh, what happens is that the kind of path that the consumer takes in terms of discovering information and decision making is significantly different from the traditional pre-COVID method, uh, where typically, let's say, going into retail and then banking on the retailer recommendation was extremely important, for example, in the smartphone category. Uh, now, what is happening is that as consumers uh, have shifted, a large number of them have shifted to online or they didn't have a choice for a particular period of time, but to buy only from online, they discovered new methods of actually evaluating products and uh, uh, new methods of actually discovering information. Video is one of the most important formats today uh, available to the
offline to discover about products and learn about products and actually you know then create their beliefs whether this product is better or another product is better so these are some uh, you know very fundamental shifts uh, you know which have been accelerated uh, they were already happening even before covid uh, but they've got actually accelerated during the covid period and what i expect is that this is here to stay and uh, the way consumer is going to find about products uh, they're going to use youtube they're going to use videos they're going to find information they're going to compare reviews uh, which are in person which are like online demonstration of products rather than offline demonstration of products is going to be something you know which is going to get uh, even more critical going forward across many more categories uh, and this is something that marketers would have to you know look out for uh, post covid as one of the key shifts that will happen another important shift which will happen is uh, uh, the fact that uh, you know consumers also have started interacting uh, with the brands much more online as compared to offline and uh, the whole approach of product launches etc or interaction with consumers is going to get more hybrid and it's going to get more online as well as offline so these are some uh, permanent long term trend changes what we foresee uh, you know currently happening uh, post covid fair enough samin uh, you concur with that what more can you add to that i think i think uh, one of the things that's really going to be a big uh, change is is just going to be the uh, introduction of 5g in india i think that's that's going to be a massive game changer for our industry uh, i think we'll have we'll see massive upgrade cycles coming into play um, the capability of devices itself is going to be transformational so what we as as the smartphone industry uh, are able to kind of really put into our phones that enable our consumers to really leverage this 5g um 5g cycle is is going to be interesting to see right so i think for 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 the industry the 5g up the the launch of 5g in india is going to be quite a transformational moment uh and i think at oppo that's something that we are taking very very seriously we just set in place a 5g lab at hyderabad to kind of be at the front of that that pack that really changes and transforms uh, consumer behavior uh in the 5g era uh, i think the second piece uh, i'll i'll kind of uh, say there's i think our offline trade is is going to be very resilient so i think we're going to as as covid kind of starts fading we are going to see offline kind of earn back or win back consumers i think it's a it's a very resilient channel um and i, I i'm not i'm not doubting the importance of e-commerce i just feel uh, we we cannot write uh, write off uh, offline just yet i think we're going to see a very strong comeback from the offline trade these guys are going to kind of uh, they're 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 hardy the tenacious so we're going to see them kind of come back and win their consumers back uh, and i think the third one just from a pure marketing perspective that i think uh, i'm looking forward to actually uh, is a rebound from our consumers to wanting to interact with brands offline right i think uh, very quickly consumers will want to kind of uh, you know enjoy the the sweat tears and and glory of of live events uh, you know i think i think that's something that people have been missing deeply Uh, and i think consumer engagement in the real world is going to kind of come back quite it's going to be a u shaped recovery on that front i generally feel there's going to be a a pretty big place for live events i think consumers are going to be dying to kind of get back and and really sweat together if i may call it that so so i think uh, that i definitely is... I'm, i'm sorry no started ipl is around the corner we'll see it in action yeah exactly exactly and and i think it was a bit scary to see the the size of the audience that was there in the stadium yesterday but it tells you that people are, are i mean we've been in prison for a, for a year now right and people are dying to kind of go out and start experiencing normal life again and i think the imperative on us as as brands that kind of really drive marketing is to recreate some of those those amazing passionate events where where young kids and consumers can kind of come back and and enjoy life once again so i'm waiting for that rebound fantastic muchira last word on this yeah uh, well thank you i'm going to take a slightly different shift really i think um, yes digital accelerate i mean accelerating digital transformation is here to stay accelerating constantly you know innovating and evolving um you know someone said online uh, dinesh said online damian said offline i think the consumer decision journey is going to be very very complex it's going to get more and more entangled and it's not going to be online or offline purely i think an omni channel world is here to stay which is one where one fuses into the other it's not content it's not e-commerce it's shoppable content i mean if i look at the trends globally really and how consumers are getting information assimilating and acting on it 
those decision journeys are going to be so complex and that's going to give us all the good news is we'll all have a lot of work to do as a consequence in decoding those those decision journeys the first part the second thing i think is you know i think pre covid companies were revenue driven how much growth and how much revenue right covid last year let's be honest became profitable or sustainable growth how do you do the right kind of balance between the supply shock demand shock and how do you get the right input levers in i think going forward though it's going to be about consumer lifetime experiences that as a brand you can build you know so what damian said was the the sweat tears and glory moments or whether you're on the online moments but how are you there for the long ride and in that is the third piece that i think we're going to see more and more of we are picking up globally that consumers are worried about their data security their safety and what's being handed out in the public domain and therefore privacy security cookieless world first party data that's going to be a huge driver of what's going to be the change coming ahead and it happens because i'm moving online because i've seen it grandmas in italy are ordering groceries online right the women would walk out and get their shopping bags and you know those iconic pictures that we'd see and it's true the demographic shift to online and e-commerce means that people are going to look for safety and security and data privacy and if you're not going to do that as a brand or as a business you could be sitting at a very interesting crossroad of whether a consumer trusts you because at the end of the game whether it's digital transformation whether it's the kind of experiences you want to give and holding on to a consumer for the lifetime you want your consumers to trust you above all so i think for me uh, covid is going to change the relationship in terms of what consumers are going to demand from brands in the new world because that's here so it's going to be an exciting journey given points first party data cookieless world i think all of these and and the way you know hardware software and the entire kind of ecosystem is merging together content i think uh, phone companies will also morph into a very different beast you know five years down the line they will not be hardware companies anymore thank you all the panelists we uh, don't have time for more discussions but before we go i'll i'll we have lots of questions i'll take a few questions so that you know uh, Nabil, sorry, uh, I I have a I have to excuse sure. myself. I have a hard stop. Uh, sure. Thank, thank you. you, thank you so much. It was a pleasure connecting with all of you. Pleasure. Thank you, Shivam. Thank you, Shivam. This question is about uh, how do you create uh, segregated content marketing strategy for different age groups? Sandeep, uh, would you like to take this up? Yep. Uh, segregated content. Um, it see, it purely comes from the product. uh pinpointing who this product is going to be majoritarily bought by um, next point would be what do they consume where do they consume and when do they consume once you have the answer then the segregation presents itself to you if i can add to that um, you know we've been doing a very interesting piece of work uh, which we kicked off uh, now a year ago um with what we call nokia tribes globally these are people who are global citizens right people across the world connected by shared values shared experiences and also a shared set of what they believe is important for them right these nokia tribes are people who've got by the way high affinity to our brand and, and to the values that we espouse because we don't believe that everyone will ever espouse the same values to your point on segmented if you do not talk to those consumers uh, first and build really strong fortresses you're really losing out on what can be a core constituency of advocates evangelists and people who can build your brand messaging and amplify it and that for us has been a really and this is not just about you know influencers going and spouting out a message this is about people who truly live eat and breathe the values that your brand is for and therefore they are authentic they are people who are trusted within those trusted groups that brands will never have access to and that segmented strategy i think is possibly uh the biggest key to unlock really sustainable growth and value for the brand yeah so charan that's a there's a there's another question on content marketing creative strategy is not e easy to do it has to be the right balance between your intuition and what the data is showing you how can you find a better balance between these two well i think that if somebody has the uh, the the scientific answer to that question then please write the patent over it so that we can you can benefit and we can all learn 
but certainly <laughs> I think that the trick of the trade here is really to to be open to testing and open to experimentation because nothing can change your brand message that is your unique identity as a marketer that is something that you rem- that that your fans consumers users that that is what they all gravitate towards right what is that usp that that i provide but when i'm trying to deliver that message it's about i think really experimentation and it's the data that can power that experimentation thanks damian uh, last question this is for you uh, what are your main sources of channels for higher share of voice in the dig- in digital media higher highest so i i lost it yeah. sovs in digital media on digital media what are your main sources so in on digital media what are the areas that you significantly pay attention and you know investments in well i mean i think i think to be honest uh, it's not any different because because you're looking for scale in 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 this question i think it's not different from any of the other uh, panelists here so i think we do spend a significant amount of attention to to youtube uh, to instagram uh, i think the streaming services are challenging to kind of get uh, into i think there are some challenges around uh, how you can engage with audiences who are streaming content on ott platforms uh, but we're starting to kind of figure out how we do that uh, but largely i think it's it's i think it's it's largely youtube um, and 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 then i think instagram those are the those are the our pet platforms if you may call them that um, and then of course the ott is the is the uh, is the one platform that we're trying to figure out how we kind of uh, engage with uh, but yeah i think it's it's still the the usual suspects fantastic thank you thank you to all the panelists for spending time rohel back to you thank you so much uh, i just want to thank uh, every each uh, each one of you mr ruchira jetli cmo india hmb global mr dinesh sharma business head commercial pc and smartphone systems business group aces group sorry i uh, if i missed your name earlier mr avnish khosla cmo word of an idea who have to leave uh, at 4 mr damian singh kanoria cmo oppo india mr shivam ranjan head of marketing motorola india mr sandeep ks associate director marketing redmi india mr hanan fojal uh, vp apex uh the bula and mr navala who jacko founder exchange for media it's been a great discussion thank you hope to see you at a physical event very soon thank you for joining us thanks thank thanks, thanks navala and thank you to my co-founder everybody yeah.